Well, thank you so much for having me today. Again, I'm Callie Archer, president of Junior Achievement. Um, we teach kids the real world, and we teach them how to be productive in that. So our curriculums and things are always changing. So it's, excited, it's exciting to get to be a part of this because we're in a similar but different space. I know we've got people from all over the United States here. Real quick, has anybody ever had a Junior Achievement program? I'm just curious. Got one. Okay, now we got a few. Has anybody ever been to JA BizTown? Okay. So that's our signature program here locally, and we bring every fifth grader through that. And really, we consider that kind of a foundational career exploration experience. The kids get to apply for jobs, get earn money. They come there. They really are just trying to figure out how they could see themselves fitting into our local economy. And so, again, foundational experience that we hope will get them excited about their futures and showcase some of our regional employers. So I'm really excited to be here today with some of these regional employers and state employees, uh, employers, uh, to kind of talk about their why and why they have invested so heavily um, in these important educational initiatives so I'm going to let each of the panelists just introduce yourselves, kind of tell me a little bit, of, tell everyone a little bit about your company and then your role within those companies. Hello, everybody. My name is Bailey Anglin. I am Director of HR and Engagement for 21st Mortgage. Um, we're right in the heart of downtown. Um, we are affiliated with Clayton Homes. Um, we originate manufactured housing. We have just over a thousand team members. And I handle all of our engagement, all of our HR, and our community outreach. Hi. Hello, everyone. My name is Whitney Holt uh, from Eastman Chemical. Eastman is a uh, global um, specialty materials company located headquartered in uh, Kingsport, Tennessee. Uh, um, I'm currently with uh, our public affairs organization and uh, global chair in our IND Centers of Excellence. Y'all hear me? Hi, I'm Rachel Hargis. I'm with Unum Group. It's a disability insurance company that is international, but is headquartered in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Uh, my role is a corporate social responsibility manager. Can y'all hear me now? Well, oh, I need to like lean into it. Uh, I work for Unum Group. It's a disability company that is international, but is headquartered in Chattanooga. My role is corporate social responsibility specialist. So I work with nonprofits. I do all of our grant funding and sponsorships and wrangle volunteer opportunities for our volunteers. Fantastic. Thank you all for taking time to be here. I know your time is valuable, but I hope you'll be able to shed some light on kind of how your companies have been involved over the years. Um, so, Bailey, I'm going to start with you. 21st Mortgage has been a huge supporter of Tennessee Achieves since its inception as Knox Achieves back when I first got engaged in 2008. Um, your founding CEO and CFO are also founding Tennessee Achieves board members, so obviously they feel strongly about this. Why did 21st decide in the very early days to jump in and support this program? Yeah, so um, Tim Williams and Rich Ray are founders, um, CEO and CFO. So both of them have always felt very strongly about education, especially post high school education, because it wasn't real common um, for people to go to college in their era. So um, Rich once told me he was at his high school reunion and only 10% of his high school class had gone to college. So it was always a conversation that Tim and Rich had, hey, how could we encourage us? How could we help our community? Um, and Rich said, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't because people didn't want to go to college. It was because their, their families, their parents didn't encourage it. They didn't go to college. Um, and then scholarships were rare during that time. So um, when Mayor Mike Ragsdale was serving as mayor, one of his missions was to remove obstacles to post high school education. So not just scholarship dollars, but also a need for some type of mentoring to encourage high school st seniors to encourage their education. So one day Tim and Rich got a call from Randy Boyd and he, he asked Tim and Rich to come join um, Mayor Ragsdale with conversation about a new program that they wanted to roll out for continued education. And during that conversation, they all, um, they all talked about um, some of their, their former classmates that um, they hadn't gotten their college education and um, they weren't able to reach their full potential because of their education. 
So um, after Bear Ragsdale and Randy Boyd talked about this program, Tim and Rich knew that this was, this was a program that could be impactful. So the two of them um, joined the board immediately, and they started mentoring from inception. So um, they both felt strongly about this program from the beginning. They still do. Um, Tim is still active on the board. Rich retired two years ago, and he's no longer on the board. But both of them have had five to six mentors every year since 2008. So um, that's kind of how they, how they got involved. And to this day, we're very passionate at 21st about the program because of everything that Tim and Rich have pushed out for it. So what do you think, just kind of as a quick follow-up to that, what do you think that's meant to 21st Mortgage in terms of employee morale, like how to, or any, you know, any of those factors and why has, have you all stayed engaged 15 years later? Yeah. So, um, like I said, I handle engagement for 21st Mortgage and, um, one of our values is to give back to our community. So we have a lot of partnerships in the community and we have a policy that allows for our team members to, um, have volunteer time off. They're able to take some of their time and go give back in the community and we encourage them to use it. And one of the programs that we suggest that they do is Tennessee Achieves, um, to mentor, to be part of it. And we encourage that because mentoring is also important within 21st as a company. Um, we realize that it's made our team stronger, um, and we've seen the impact of that. We have the best leaders and managers in the Knoxville community. Um, the reason why I know that is because just this year in 2023, we won the leadership recognition for Knoxville's top workplaces. So mentoring is something that we, um, you know, we're very passionate about within. And so we, we encourage our team members that have had mentors at 21st Mortgage or throughout their life to give that back and mentor students that need the support. We have a team member that has um, been a mentor for Tennessee Chiefs for eight years in a row. So he's one that his experience and the stories that he can share with our team, it brings a group together. Um, he talks about, you know, the impacts that he feels that he's done through the program. And it's helping our participation within 21st. Um, it's helping grow the mentors. And it's also a great engagement opportunity because it's getting a group together within our company to talk about, um, you know, similar things that they're interested in. So um, 21st is very grateful for our partnership with Tennessee Achieves, and we plan to continue this. Wonderful. Well, thank you. So Whitney, um, Eastman was a founding member of the Drive to 55, as was Unum, and so we'll get to you in a second, Rachel. But why did Eastman answer this call back in 2014 when Governor Haslam launched this initiative? Like, what really made Eastman excited about being one of those founding members? So we recognized... Um, Local students really lack the understanding. Of, oh, pardon me. I can't hold it in my hands because it'll be everywhere. So, <laughs> uh, can you hear me okay? Okay. Um, we, you know, we recognized that there weren't many students that, that understood the requirements for higher, edu higher education. Um, the drive to 55 was instrumental in communicating uh, the requirements, getting that message to students. Um, it, you know, most of our labor force comes from the area. So we understood the importance of higher educational attainment. And so it was easy for us to say yes when this opportunity was presented. Um, and, and I'll say since then, you know, we've seen really great work come out of um, a strong ACC, bright start uh, with respect to um, illiteracy in the region. Um, and when we overlay that with our environmental justice findings with respect to high school graduation rate, some of the components that, that contribute to that, uh, two things became very clear to us. One, we made the right choice in joining the alliance uh, in, in 14, um, and, and it's helped us reaffirm our commitments recently. Uh, but the other thing is um, what was clear was the importance of uh, community participation in, in driving through those, those numbers that we well, and just as a follow-up to that, Eastman has actually recruited more mentors than any other Drive to 55 Alliance member this year. So thank you for that. Thank you. I think the group would love to hear some of those strategies. Um, you know, Bailey talked about paid time off. What are some of those strategies that Eastman has used to recruit those mentors internally and incentivizing this and really making it a part of your company values? Um for the, to be participating in this program. Yeah, so we have paid time off too. It's a, it's a, it's a great program. But um, yeah, so maybe why we find this important, I guess, is um, 
some of the things that I, I talked about just recently, right, the, the data uh, from, from the EJ tools, from Strong ACC, from Bright Start. But now we have nearly 10 years of, of compelling data from Tennessee Achieves that underscores the importance of, of, of participation. Um, we've worked really hard at Eastman to build a strong social responsibility culture. Um, we're invested in King Sport. We need our hometown and the surrounding area to be successful because it's how we attract talent. Helping young people reach their full potential, you know, like she talked about, that's, a, that's, that's key to the equation because they're representative of the quality of life that exists there, right? So I've already mentioned it, the, the DOE's uh, EJ tools. But we were an early adopter uh, using that data for purposeful decisions. Um, but we, we went just a, a little more, right? We are a, a data-driven company, uh, a company full of engineers and scientists and analytical minds. So we shared that data with our employees, we help them understand uh, the implications of not addressing gaps. We help them understand why Eastman takes some of the actions we take, and we made it a workforce development call to action. That's fantastic. Uh, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I remembered one, one other thing I Go think you'll find it. helpful. I'm sorry. One thing I think you'll find helpful. We have a, a corporate social responsibility platform we call My Impact, right? And we're, we're able to organize efforts, uh, track outcomes, identify levers we can pull to drive additional social change. Um, I, I, I consider that platform Eastman's Town Square, honestly, because it's where the, the, the diversity of thought within the company thrives. And uh, it, it, it's really helped us drive tremendous outcome for the company, but also in the communities where we operate. And, and that's a tool that we used uh, for this effort, too. That's great. That's a great tool. So, Rachel, also, Unum was a founding member of the Drive to 55 Alliance as well. So thank you for that. Um, you know, kind of talk about why you all as a company made this commitment. And then, you know, you've been involved with both of these, these organizations for over a decade. So financially as well as recruiting mentors. So, you know, kind of why you got started and then what has kept you engaged in some of those tactics that you all have used as well. Sure. So Unum is one of our core foundation that's giving back to the community. And so we want to make sure that as many of our neighbors as possible have access to high quality living wage jobs. And one of the best ways to do that, we know that one of the best ways to do that is having a degree or a certificate. And so the Drive to 55 initiative really dovetailed really nicely with what we wanted to do, with the impact we wanted to make in the social space. But from a selfish perspective, we also wanted to have high quality, like well, well equipped employees to hire from. And Programs like Tennessee Achieves and, and Tennessee Promise really encourage that. Like these are students that we ton we hire a ton of local talent into kind of entry level jobs in Chattanooga. These are roles that don't necessarily require a specific degree, but we do value degree completion because it promotes skills that we look for: technology skills, uh, cooperation, collaborative thinking, the, the ability to work with different types of people, and a commitment to finishing things honestly. And so, these programs are crucial to to bolstering the workforce that we hire from. I mean, yes, we love to get back to the community, but also as a sustainability, for the, for the sustainability of our company, programs like Tennessee Achieves are crucial to making sure that we have talent to hire from so that we can continue to be a business in our area. I love that. So my grandfather, I come from a long line of higher education, and so I love everything that you all do. My grandfather, this is like total sidebar, he was a college president, and he used to say, don't let your degree get in the way of your education because all of the things that you were just talking about, it's like, and the things that this conference has been talking about, it's like the degree, while very important in some specific industries, sometimes it's less important than just like you going and you learning all of those collaboration, teamwork, communication, writing, all of those skills that we really need our employers to have. So I love that. Um, okay, so Bailey, back to you. Uh, 21st Mortgage is one of the largest employers of our recent of recent college graduates in Knoxville. So, and maybe in all of East Tennessee or Tennessee, I'm not sure, but you guys are a great hiring organization right out of college. So while you're a financial-based company, you hire these students with varying degrees of study. So what can higher education institutions and promise programs be doing to better prepare students to enter the workforce in general? And what are you all looking for? Yeah, so at 21st, we do hire all majors. Um, and, you know, a few things, I have three things that I think um, would be helpful. 
One of, the first thing is to encourage um, students to have internships and mentors so, um, so they can get a true feel of how it is to work in the corporate world. Uh, we have so many new hires that come in straight from college. Maybe they didn't have a chance to work through college. Maybe they didn't need to, but they come in and then um, they're, you know, they're surprised at the work required that is um, that they have to complete in a 40-hour work week. So I think having those opportunities and to encourage students to have internships to kind of get that feel, to know that this is, this is what it's like working in the real world because we want them to be prepared when they come in. We don't want them to be surprised. And then we're, um, we have expenses and costs to train them and then they end up leaving because they, they weren't prepared for it. So that's the first thing. Um, the second thing is to teach them the importance of attitude and work ethic when they begin their career. So at 21st, we're going to train. We have a great training program. We will train and teach you how to do the job. We'll give you the tools and resources um, to help you be successful in your career at 21st. We want um, we want our team members to come in at that entry level, and we want them to move up the ladder. So we'll give you all those tools to do that. But one thing we can't give you is is drive and attitude. So that goes a long way. Um, you know, so giving giving that advice to students when they're entering the work world, I think, would be really helpful. Um, the third thing, the last thing is to be, is teach them to be problem solvers and think outside the box, be creative. Um, one of our strategic initiatives at 21st Mortgage is innovation. So, um, as we continue to grow at a rapid rate, we're going to be looking for the strongest and the best candidates for that next promotion. So having skills to think outside the box, be problem solvers, think of new ideas, it's, it's going to help set them apart for that next promotion. So I think that would be helpful. Those are three great tips. So, Rachel, this question's for you. As a larger employer in a mid-sized city, what challenges does Unum face in hiring? So, post the biggest one is post-COVID. We're not just competing locally for talent. We're competing nationally. So, we have to find people who are either already in town or are willing to move there. And that's, you know, Chattanooga is a great city, but there's a lot of other great cities. And that's certainly been a challenge post-COVID. Um, also, because we are a mid-sized city and not a large city, we have difficulty finding like niche talent, CPAs, actuaries, things like IT, just because there's fewer people, there's fewer, fewer possibility that you will find the people that you need. So what are you, you all doing to address some of those challenges? And are there any takeaways for the people in the room today that could take back to their communities in terms of how you all are recruiting, knowing the competitive environment that we're in? So we are very deliberate about recruiting, like forming relationships with the schools around us. We have a relationship with just about every uh, college or university in a hundred mile radius of our campus in Chattanooga. Um, so that's, we want to be forming relationships with students before they graduate so that they, when they get out into the job market, like they know if you know already and recognize that this is an opportunity that, that I can have. And that this is an organization that is looking for kind of fresh talent, which we have an immense need for, uh, we also are trying to be deliberate about strategically seeking out diversity so that our workforce is reflective of the communities that we are based in. Um, we know that obviously like insurance has typically been kind of white collar and looks like one thing, but that is not reflective of the communities that we serve. And so being deliberate about not just organized like high schools or I mean, I'm sorry, not just colleges or universities, but like even high schools because we don't require degrees for a lot of our entry level roles. And so um, being deliberate about recruiting is also really important and kind of being creative. So we have a, a tech hub in Atlanta. And so we use that as a base to like for hiring in our Chattanooga office. It's only 90 minutes. Like we're also really flexible with hybrid work schedules. And so not, not making people be in the office and giving people the opportunity to kind of have a flex schedule, flex work situation. So you get the culture of building something in an office and seeing people and building rapport, but also having the flexibility to like, you know, wear yoga pants on Wednesdays if you want. I love yoga pant Wednesday. <laughs> Okay, so Whitney, Tennessee Achieves recently pulled data on Tennessee Promise students and found that 51% of the students in the program are majoring in a STEAM or healthcare-related field. What does that mean for a company like Eastman that's operating in a largely rural region that needs talent in those in-demand fields? <laughs> Tell us how you do it. <laughs> Well, Yoga Pant Wednesday yeah. at Eastman. We haven't tried that yet, so maybe, maybe that's a, a... Add that to your list of benefits. Right, 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 right. Well, well, we hope it means, you know, an increase of talent um, prepared to help Eastman solve some of the world's toughest problems, like, you know, caring for 10 billion people while you combat 
climate change and the, the plastic waste crisis, right? I mean, this is hard business. Um, and, and so we're laser focused on three things, and this is similar to what Rachel said earlier, but we're, we're, we're focused on three things that, that we think make any community sustainable, and that's uh, um, ensuring economic success, social well-being, and environmental integrity. Um, it's uh, – I get my – there was one point I want to make sure I, I get with you on. Those, those three components that we talked about, right, the, the ensuring uh, economic success, the social well-being, environmental integrity, successful achievement of those components requires a literate community. And maybe more importantly for a community like, like Kingsport, we're talking 70,000 people, um, is uh, an educated workforce fr from which to hire. So along those lines, knowing that we need 55% of our population or more to have some kind of post-secondary degree or training, um, you know, and knowing that you need a lot of those degree, degreed folks to come work for you, how do we incentivize and these, the people in the room in their communities, how do we incentivize or even get students excited about some of these fields and expose them to some of those fields earlier? Yeah, so one of the things we like to do is um, we go out to local schools talking to kids about what STEAM jobs look like, what jobs at Eastman look like, how to prepare for a career at Eastman, just just how to prepare for it, right? And then later on, we, we have a really strong work-based learning program where we, um, we re-engage with those students and we show high schoolers what's possible with a career at Eastman. Um, Fortunately for us, what we have working in our favor, Eastman's a compelling and exciting company, right? We, we, we're, we're, <laughs> we're doing really cool things while we solve problems that benefit everyone. Um, and so it, it's easy. It's, it's gotten easier for us to, to tell that story and get students excited. But manufacturing is exciting. It's not necessarily blue collar anymore. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just not necessarily blue collar. Um, it's... It's not an assembly line, uh, certainly not at Eastman, right? We, we don't ask our employees to check their brain when they come to work. In fact, we need them to do the opposite. We, we need them to uh, speak up and, and feel like they're part of, uh, of our, our overall strategy. Um, and so it's, I mean, in, manufacturing is robotics. It's engineering components. It's business and computer acumen. Um, but it's also that, that, that really high emotional intelligence needed thrive in a, an innovation culture. The robotics are super cool. Just <laughs> not in my wheelhouse, but I'm really glad that people are doing those things and the AI is as well. So kind of to wrap up and before we see if there's any questions, but I'm sure at this point, each of you have had one or more uh, former Tennessee Achieves, Tennessee Promise students um, come to work at your organization. Do you have any fun stories or success stories that you want to share with us today? Sure, I can share one. Um, we, we do have, um, you know, 21st, we have just over a 1,000 team members. Um, we've had several team members that have been able to um, use the Tennessee Promise Scholarship. Um, but one story comes to mind, which is pretty special. Um, like I said, our CEO and CFO always mentored every year. Um, and one of our CEO's mentees, he, um, he went and got his two-year degree um, under the scholarship, and he probably wouldn't have gotten his two-year degree without that scholarship. He, he came, didn't come from a good background, didn't come from a good um, home. So he was able to get that scholarship. Um, Tim mentored him, helped him get through his two-year degree. And then he qualified, um, actually got, after he got his two-year degree, he qualified to get a scholarship under the Tim and Amy Williams Foundation, which is um, a four-year degree here at UT. So um, he came to UT. Um, he completed his degree. Uh, made great grades, and he now works at 21st. So it's just one of those stories. He would have never gotten that education. He wouldn't have that background, um, and he 100% got through college, and now he's he's working at our company. He's giving back to our community. He's bettering our community. So I just love that story. That's just one. I know there's several others, but, um, you know, it really is just a great program, and we can tell such a difference it's making our community. Yeah, so, it, I mean, it's really similar. A lot of these stories would be really similar. But one of the most recent students uh, that we hired from low-income background uh, worked all the way through high school supporting her family. She's now employed. She went through the work-based learning program, uh, uh, a little more education after high school. 
Uh, she's on her own, has her own place now, still supporting her family, but in a much better position. And, and she's giving back, right? Now, now they see the value. These kids see the value in, in what they were given. And so they give back to that program. And that's the cool piece of this is, is, is sort of this service begets service. That fits perfectly with the yeah. example I was going to use. Uh, one of our, she's one of my most engaged uh, volunteer employees. I love her so much. Uh, she is in our audit department, which is like good for y'all. Uh, <laughs> she was super quiet and she like has said herself that she probably never responded to her Tennessee Achieves mentor when they reached out to remind her about things just because she is like super shy and quiet. But she recognized the value of that, especially now that she's in the working world. And so she signs up to be a Tennessee Promise mentor every year. And she like because she service begets service, like because of that, she gets involved in everything because she knows the difference that that person made in her life. And now, now that she's in the working world and recognizes like we have a similar kind of PTO, like you don't have to take pay time off to volunteer at work. So she takes full advantage of that. And I love that. Like, please do. But she's the perfect example of why this program is important. Like she's a, she's super engaged and it's because she recognizes the value of what she received. Even if she never responded as a student, like she recognizes the value of that. She might have been one of my students. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. Well, we have a few more minutes. We maybe have time for one question. No? Anybody have one that's brief? Okay. Well, thank you so much, ladies. Thank, thank you. you all for being on the panel today. Thank you.